the offensive line is going to be big this year. If they if they lean early on the running game and they trust the running game, it'll be because the they trust the offensive line to be able to you know be able to reset the line of scrimmage and open up holes for those young running backs because those run, young running backs are unproven commodities. But your offensive line is a proven commodity. You just need to take the next step, and not only in run blocking but also pass blocking. So I went and looked at the 19 sacks Texas gave up in 2022, 19 of them, which is this is not a that's not a lot. It's not a huge number. It's not a huge number. Here's the compelling thing, though, because I tried to look for trends, patterns. Like, well, is there something that is disproportionately more effective versus Texas offensive line than one concept or another? And I didn't really find anything until the Baylor game, the last game of the season. Dave Aranda. Dave yeah, that Aranda. That was the game where when Ewers' head was spinning and every time he dropped back. Exactly. Dave Aranda figured out. So nobody else really – I think Dave Aranda just kind of looked at the sample size and what he had that – what Texas had been – had uh, was presented with and what they had to try to adjust to during the season. And I just think he came up with a masterful pressure package or at least a uh, some concepts in within the pressure package that worked well against the Texas O-line. And so they, they allowed, by the way, they allowed five sacks in that game, which was the most sacks they allowed in any game. So well, five of the 19. And that's, yes, that's, it's yeah. one game. So already, you know, okay, well, <laughs> they had a lot of success. What did they do? Well, what they did essentially was present what they call an amoeba front. Uh, they used to call them ghost fronts. You guys have seen this where they line up seven, eight guys all across the line of scrimmage. All right, some guys in a two-point stance, some guys in a three-point stance. And essentially, this helps them uh, use what they call simulated pressure, which is four guys rushing, but you never know where the four guys are coming from because you have that ghost front. They call it ghost front because the, you know, the quarterback can see ghosts. And what he did was he would drop. He got seven guys across the front all lined up on the line of scrimmage. You're going to drop three. I'm going to rush four, but you have no idea which four. Which four. <laughs> and the offensive line at times, it would confuse the blocking schemes because they would set the protection or slide the protection and it would just be wrong. Uh, you know what I mean? And they would a free rusher would end up coming or they would uh, end up confused and two old linemen would be devoted to one. So what Dave Aranda showed, and I looked at the five sacks, in the five sacks you had either that those amoeba fronts I just discussed, those ghost fronts, and or a simulated pressure on five on four of those five sacks. So that he was using the concept a lot. And I think if teams are picking up defensively where Dave Aranda left off, that's where they're going. Now, Washington didn't didn't use it, curiously. Washington, I, I think, figured they didn't need it. Because <laughs> Washington actually is one of the top 10 best teams in the country at creating pressure, and they had their own type of pressure. So they actually were able to create organic pressure. Hell, at one time, Texas had an, had a, a, an eight-man protection against a four-man rush and allowed a sack. Against Washington, so <laughs> I remember that. I think I mean you just watched the film this weekend because that's yeah. how Rod spends his weekends watching yeah. film. An old James, but um, Hayden Connor, the left guard, really struggled in that yeah. game. Uh, I remember him just looking. All right, where are they coming from? He was seeing ghosts in yes. pass protection. Yeah, so Washington, yeah, they got our, they had, actually Texas had the two sacks they gave up versus Washington. They had six and. Oh, seven. I was talking about Connor in the Baylor game. He oh, really the Baylor, no, you're right in the Baylor game. Yes, so of course, that, and I think that was the whole purpose of it. Right? right, you wanted to 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 confuse those uh, those offensive linemen, and whatever pass protection they set, it wouldn't always be wrong. Um, but there's a good chance that one of the four rushers that were coming, their simulated pressure, would be a free rusher. Which which who's responsible for the free rusher? Quarterback. The quarterback's responsible for the free rusher, so you're putting a little bit more responsibility and burden on the young quarterback too. And what? So what? And think about this, guys. What did Quinn Ewers talk about? Is more satisfying than throwing a touchdown pass this year. What did he say? Get your check right. Getting the pass protection right. right. <laughs> he said, getting the right pass protection. Oh, it's just as satisfying as throwing a touchdown pass. Yeah, because he experienced that Baylor game last year, and he's like, damn, touchdown pass don't mean a damn thing if I don't get the pass protection right up front. So that is a young, maturing quarterback. He's growing. He's evolving. He knows, all right, you know what? First things first. Guys, we get the pass protection right. Before I start thinking about Xavier Worthy and that one-on-one he's got with that really nice route combination of the post corner, get the pass protection right. And I think the Baylor game is a direct reflection of why they want to emphasize that now actually 
the Baylor game isn't as troubling to me as the Washington game, considering you had seven eight man protections and you were still giving up sacks versus four man rushes. That is a that is a o- big O-line issue. Did not have a good game against Washington. They, they did, did not run blocking they like or pass they blocking. Enjoyed the holidays. Yes, and that's, <laughs> so my point is, we need the offensive line to take a leap this year, pass no blocking question. and run blocking. And I can tell you right now, they're gonna see if Nick Saban and was it Kevin Steele's new DC, you're gonna see them amoeba and them ghost fronts, and you're gonna see lots of simulated pressures. I can guarantee it. As a matter of fact, now that is on my list of ways to defend Texas offense. You got to throw that simulated pressures and ghost fronts out there a ton, and I think you're going to see it more. Confuse Quinn yours and make him. Well, the idea of that, to me, Rod, and we'll get to the timeout and pick this up, uh, also get into some of the Longhorns uh, trying to make NFL teams. B. John Robinson's first action in Atlanta. Roshan Johnson. Colt McCoy got the start for the Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Shane Bouchel getting you to shine in Kansas City. He looks good, he don't he? all that coming up. Yeah. He looks really good. Uh, it might be the backup to Patrick Mahomes uh, if he continues to play like he is. That's but wild. I wanted to mention, so for, for our audience, if, you're, if you're, you're, you're breaking it down behind the curtain of how this works with the defense, if they're all standing up and some of them are standing, shouldn't yeah. you have an advantage in power run if you're just going to run the ball? Or do they do that in passing situations only? They they, they did mostly. You no, know, it, it was some run situations. I would some, think uh, you should have the advantage running the ball if you got dudes yeah, that are that just were, standing up. Yeah, you're right. There were leverage game. two first. Down, you're right. There are yeah. There were there were multiple first downs where they also were but able that, to get but a that second. also is Stark is passing on first down. Though. That is also Quinn Ewers getting a check right. Right now, look, he can look to the sidelines and look at the big board and. But you can check to a run in that spot, and if the you offensive could. line is more of a power running line this year, uh-huh. that should be an opportunity to attack an amoeba defense with your own run game. That's a great point. To start trust last year, you might not have trust this young quarterback to make that audible to check. Yeah. This year, you have to, especially if you want to show NFL coaches that this guy is ready for the next level. And what do you always say? If Quinn's not declaring for the draft next NFL draft, then something he might, might be transferring. Yes, yeah, something might have gone wrong. Something where everything didn't go as planned. And I, I so I, I'm with you on that. that's a great point. He I don't think he did that last season. I, I don't I don't believe I I observed a lot of that last season. Of checking out of a play, of checking or out trusting of a play. him to check out yeah. of the play. That's got to be the next step because something tells me he'll trust that guy Manning to check out of a play when it's time. Right? I mean, and understand mm. the the concept and get it called right because you got to call that the line of scrimmage and the yeah. linemen have to hear. Okay, um, you know that's when they're calling out. You know, yeah, exactly. You're Peyton Manning. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. who's you the know, bike? This guy, the bike, this, yeah. yeah, strong side. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're helping your <laughs> offensive line not look like you know, look like they don't know what they're doing. That's the that's the quarterback's job. Uh, we heard if you're watching Hard Knocks, you've heard Aaron Rodgers talking to Zach Wilson, the backup quarterback there, about hey. You know, mm-hmm. no look passes are nice, but get the check right. Set the protection right. Set the right. protection, <laughs> and you'll be in a much better place. Yep. Uh, your offensive line will appreciate it. You'll appreciate it because you won't get ear holed. And I think that's what <laughs> that's why he's like, oh, it's just as satisfying as throwing a touchdown pass because yeah, he has some trauma yeah. from that Baylor game and the way they you know the way they approach their pressure packages. I think Texas will be able to solve it and remedy it. It's not anything that football teams aren't doing at every level of football, but they definitely struggled with that concept.